This year, you know, we went out there, we said, hey, we want to be aggressive, but we don't want to make any big mistakes. It's definitely been a weird year as far as the everyone's just pointing fingers. Do you think all the extra torque and torque is going to torque? No, no. We already did. They won't do anything about it. Okay, sucks to be you then. Build a different engine. I don't care. That's not my decision. It doesn't do me any well to get involved with it and listen to all the whining, complaining. We wanted to dominate, and that's exactly what we've done from day one. Everybody has cried and whined all year long because we have just killed them. Adding that Pro Light Cup race that they added for at the end of Sunday is going to be a lot more pressure. It's the biggest race I've been involved in. Basically for tomorrow, I mean, our game plan is to win. Somebody's probably going to be in victory lane happy as they could be. For tomorrow, I just take people out there. Somebody's going to be down here pissed off and yelling. That's just the way the race is. Torque Series presented by Amsoil arrived at the Cycle Ranch track outside of San Antonio, Texas for the last event of the season. As the pro light drivers prepared for the weekend, they looked back on a year defined by one word, controversy. It's been a lot of controversy in the, in the pro light class. There's no controversy. There was the issue between Andrew Cadell and CJ Greaves at Crandon Spring event, when both drivers had work done on their trucks during a red flag. If it's a safety issue, radios, body panels, they allow the crew to pull it off. If it's a flat tire or racing related issue, you cannot work on the truck until they go to yellow. Then if you have to work on it, he does not get his position back. Just work on it and I'll start from the back. As soon as they know they have conditions safe, they'll go to a yellow flag, crews thrash on their trucks as best they can, change tires, and they reline them up. Go, 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 go to work on the truck. Do what you gotta do. You can work on the truck. Whether it was body panels or a broken wheel, both trucks had been worked on during the red flag, but only CJ had gotten penalized. And when they asked USAC for some answers, all they ended up with were more questions. You started working on that thing before they told me that it was yellow. When did you make that call? When we put the jack under it? to get the wrecker out of there? In my mind, I made that call. At Bark River, both Andrew Cadell and Sam Hubinet measured for an illegal track width after the first race of the weekend. At Bark River, when we measured Andrew and Sam's trucks, uh, they were deemed to be outside the limit of what the maximum width can be on a truck. This is like five millimeter too wide. It's a blatant rule violation. It doesn't matter. Don't fit. It doesn't matter. He, he, he knows it. We have people in this paddock that are worried more about our trucks than they are about their own truck, and that's why we're kicking their butt out there. I just want to race fair. You know that. I mean, it had no performance gain whatsoever. It's just the rule. Dude, do, you I think that, do you think that eighth of an inch made you lose today? Hey, I don't know. It's an eighth of an inch. Over. Yeah. That's it. There's no such thing as over. The front wheel base, that should not be checked at the end of a race. You just put this truck through 10 laps of your heck out there, it's not going to look that good after the race. What's the penalty for cheating? The point deductions, uh, which will be posted, is, it's a five point point deduction for each. Point. That penalty is 5% of championship points. You know, a 5% hit mid season to me is a significant hit. It's also a $5,000 at stake from tracks that's giving the money. That money should not be given to guys that are cheating. To go out the following day and finish one and two, it was just sort of like, there you are, just shut up. All so. the whiners complain about not. cheating trucks. Check them again, OK? Then there was the controversy over the Mopar engine and whether teams using it had an unfair horsepower advantage over the rest of the pro-light field. 
With the Pro Light class uh, this year, I mean, we did go to, to everybody required to run the V8. We had a new formula of that V8 introduced uh, with, with Mopar coming in. That package uh, created a little bit of controversy because people thought that coming out of the box, it was a little bit more than, than the other packages that existed. Everybody says these engines are equal, but they won't publish the results. You know, there's new engine manufacturers getting involved, and it's taking a toll on the class. This year, with the Ram engines with the advantage, I couldn't say I can win this race. There's a lot of other drivers in the same situation. There's drivers knowing they're coming here to get third place. No one's really approached me about it because for the first beginning of the year, I didn't show any signs of brilliance. I'm like, well, I have the same motor and I'm running sixth place. So how are they cheating and I'm not cheating? I think it's something that USAC is smart to look at and adjust. They had a chassis dyno out here in the spring that did nothing but cause more controversy. We put them on a chassis dyno plus a regular engine dyno and, and made an assessment from there. And after we did those, we, we made some adjustments to the Mopar engine. And right now, we feel like we're, we're in a good place. Even with all the controversy this year, the ProLite drivers agree there's something special about racing in the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil. And they're looking forward to competing again next season. Even the, the controversy that they got going, it's still awesome racing. I think after this year, and they clarify some rules again for next year, it'll all settle down. In 2011, saw a number of new talents emerge in pro life. A podium finish at the first event of the year showed that 15-year-old rookie C.J. Greaves would be a force to be reckoned with all season. I'm right on the edge of if, if I succeeded myself or not because every race that we finished 100%, we were on the podium. We worked all the bugs out of the truck for next year, and I think we'll definitely be a top contender. The first pro light race he wins you know, we'll officially hand down the kid nickname to, to CJ. So uh, we had somebody go get him this helmet made up uh, before the race, just in case he pulled one off this weekend. But so far, <laughs> no helmet. <laughs> it was definitely a good learning experience, but um, we would have liked to finish out better. But I mean, we got, I think, four podiums already this year, and we're hoping to come out with three more this weekend. Sean Morris finished the 2010 season at the bottom of the standings, but 2011 saw him make big improvements. Sean Morris, he's a fellow Colorado guy. It's, it's great to see him doing well. The confidence level just keeps climbing for me. Every week it feels like we get stronger and stronger in the truck. We're, we're staying up there with them, and you know, that's, that's hard. My goal for the year is to finish top five in points, and that's, that's what I'm pushing for. That's what I want. I want that. I want that. At least I want fifth, I want. I think I can get to fourth. Brad Lovell finished near the bottom of the standings in 2010. But hard work and a resiliency to get better has him among the leaders this year. Whatever he did in the offseason from 2010 to 2011 was a huge difference. At the end of last year, I wasn't sure if we were going to be around the following year because we didn't have a great year. I feel pretty confident this year that we'll be around again. He's got some small things that he's got to work on, but I, I don't think he's going to be one to uh, be off the podium ever in 2012. This year, we're, we're looking for race wins for podium finishes. Next year, we want a strong series finish, top three, uh, or, or a series win, honestly. And, and I feel that we're getting to the point that we're capable of that. Despite winning both races at Charlotte early in the season, Casey Curry, last year's champion, didn't have the year he'd hoped for in 2011. Last year they killed it and he's running the number one plate and everyone knows. I respect what he's done. He's built a big team in a short amount of time and he's ruthless to get there and he's a contender. 2011 was a, was a learning year for me. You know, we uh, we won the championship in 2010 and then and we moved directions in, in a couple different ways. It was a year for uh, R&D and I didn't really know what to expect um, as far as how I was gonna do. I feel that we have, we have the the pieces all dialed in for the puzzle now, and I, uh, I feel that 2012 is going to be a super strong year. Given his years of experience as a professional driver, it would be hard to call Sam Hubinette a rookie, but 2011 was Sam's first year in off-road racing. So being in the Traxxas Torque Series for the first time, it's been a tremendous journey for me. He's in the same boat as everyone. You know, these, the new guys still have little things to learn. It's been challenging, a lot to learn, but Thanks to a great team, Jenkins Brothers Racing, and fantastic sponsors like Mopar Ram, it definitely helped me get up to where I'm at today. Sam's a unique personality and a top contender. I'm very happy that I got to 
do so well in my first season. The fact that I, I'm up at the top and battling for top positions and, and that's, I think, seven podiums right now. Uh, I'm very happy. One young driver who proved he belonged was R.J. Anderson. He started off slow, but really came on in the second half of the season. Yeah, R.J. Anderson is one of those guys that I knew was going to be fast in the beginning. No, R.J. Anderson, he's doing great. R.J. Anderson, uh, a young, fun guy with tons of talent. He has the ability to go fast, and he feels comfortable going fast, and I like to see that in a guy, you know? I came out not knowing what to expect, and uh, they kind of all jumped at me, and I was like, jumping into a pool of sharks. This year, my goal was not the championship. My goal was just to have as many podiums as I could. Going into the next year, I'm really excited. I think we can contend for the championship. And sitting second place in the points right now, I'm, I'm pretty excited with that. You know, we had a couple races last year that really killed us. And I think we're, we, we'd be a two-time champion right now pretty easily. Casey Curry and Andrew Cadell mixed it up all the way to the checkered. Contact was made, Curry was sent flying, and Cadell thought he earned the win fair and square. But USAC officials had a very different take on the outcome, and the drama off the track was about to unfold. You were completely sideways in front of me. I couldn't I was, I was not sideways one bit, dude. What am I supposed to do? Stop and go for the freaking world championship. Go around. After finishing second overall last year, Andrew Cadell dominated the rest of the field in 2011. He entered the last event of the season, having already secured the Pro Light Championship. At the beginning of the year, we, we had total expectation on, in our Pro Light, the 43 Andrew Cadell truck, of winning the championship. Well, there is no way for us to lose the championship right now. We wrapped it up with three races to go there, uh, you know, after the first day in Chicago. Uh, wrapped it up there. Just a really a dream season. You know, I had 10 podiums in a row, starting at second Red Bud all the way to the second day of Chicago. To do that is pretty amazing in this class. Andrew has been just phenomenal this year. He's been so consistent. Uh, he's, he just, he's, he's found that aggressiveness that he needs. Uh, he's, he's really in good balance. Andrew's definitely a good driver. I mean, I think he knows it as well as everyone else. Yeah, he, he earned it. I think everyone just really brews up controversy just because they see tracks on the side of the trailer and the side of the hauler. I'm proud of him. He's, he's really dedicated. They got a great team going over there. He flat out earned it. He's very consistent. He's a great driver. I have a lot of respect for him. Before the first race of the weekend, Luke Johnson crashed during a practice round, wrecking both his truck and his chances of racing in the final event of the year. You could see it coming. In fact, the question was asked to me directly, will the pro lights, you know, be worse off? And I said, absolutely. I saw it hit and start flipping. I knew it was a pretty nasty wreck. It went over fast. When he landed, it was on the nose. Caught that front bumper and just went for a somersault ride about five times in the air. And that was before he hit the second time. Then you got another four. I've gone in for end, but not like that. I mean, he was probably doing 60 miles an hour when he went in for end. As soon as I felt the grab, I felt the whole truck get light. And then I was looking at the ground and could see the sky. Yeah, it, it happened definitely in slow motion. So I screamed, no, you know, and I just watched him. Just... That truck must have been 50 feet in the air. When you see something like that in front of you, it. It puts it in your heart, you know, you go, you realize how dangerous this sport actually is. That was, without a doubt, the scariest crash of my entire career. I almost did the same exact thing. I was within a quarter of an inch. I was wide open just trying to save it, staring at the dirt. Somehow I saved it, but I'm so disappointed for Luke. As my truck arrives in pieces back here, I'd be amazed if I was racing the rest of this weekend. We've worked so hard and I really felt that this was gonna be my weekend. I feel okay, and if there was a truck, if there was a truck available for me to race, you better believe that I, I'd be all for it. With Andrew Cadell having locked up the Pro Light Championship for the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil, the battle at Cycle Ranch would be for second place in the standings. I've been counting points, looking this way and that. We're 13 points out of second right now, and uh, we're sitting in fifth. Sixth place is 13 points back, so. We really have nothing to lose coming out here. Yeah, it's definitely something that uh, I think about. I mean, you got to think about not throwing it away. That's one thing I got to focus on. It. This weekend is all about trying to finish up, you know, get up closer to the, the top, you know, so that we can show to these guys that we are what we preach. Where I feel where we're at, we just got to focus on winning races, and and that's gotten us to a better place in the points. I'm really pleased with where we're at. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't thinking about it. What's the difference between fourth and third? Really? I mean, it, it's just you're on. 
You're on the podium and you're like, yeah, you know, I get the big check. Even though we can't win the championship, we can still win races and still go for second place in the points. And I, I'm, I'm here to do that. It's a tight battle. Anyone can bring home the runner up. And sitting second place in the points right now, I'm, I'm pretty excited with that. It's, it's like a three point ahead of Sam and then like five in front of Casey. So I mean, it's, it, it could go any way. I am happy where I'm at right now. I definitely want to be a champion. That's what I always go for. And I've had a taste of it half of the season being a points leader. But the, if I can stay on the runner up for my first rookie of the year here, uh, you know, I'm going to be stoked. I came into it not really worried about points, but a second place in points for ProLite my rookie year. I'll be really excited on a, a second place. The battle for second would begin on Saturday. RJ Anderson and Sam Hubinette qualified for the top two positions to start the race. We had RJ qualify two tenths of a second quicker than yesterday, so I was like, okay, at least we're on the, on the, on the pole position. So he chose the left side. I thought right is fine. Green flag is out. The young gun, RJ Anderson with the hole shot, hitting it turn one. I got a great start, and I was up to third, I think, out of the first corner. It was going good, and I got by Sam, and then I went down to the right-hander there in the infield, and I just made one little mistake. Battle for position now between Hugh and Cadell. Cadell goes up and over. Stay out of gas, stay out of gas, out of gas, out of gas. I hit the jumps right in. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have done that to you. It totaled the truck, so I think we're pretty much done. Uh, so I don't know if we'll be out there tomorrow, so we'll see what happens when we get back to the pits. We came out, and we were running for the top, got into the lead, battling for the lead, rolled over. They caught, they threw it full course. CJ Greaves hooks a rod, rolls over, and he'll lose multiple positions. You all right? They were going to tow me off, and I jumped right over it. I was like, no, guys, this, this isn't how it's going to go down. All right, I don't know if they're going to have you lap down or not, because they threw the yellow, and they said they're not counting laps under yellow, so. I had to go to the back. It went to the back, stay on lead lap, came back up in third. Disappointed I got a front flat. Uh, it actually went, started going down about lap three. I was chasing it, chasing it. Trouble for Anderson. He'll lose a spot to Hubert as they go through the center of the course. I didn't want to go into the hot pit. I didn't know where anyone, everyone else was at, so I didn't want to go farther back than if I kept my spot. So I uh, ended up staying running on it. It went real flat at the end. And there it is. Left front flat tire and RJ Anderson. Checkered flag out. Sam Hubert will take the win. You're on day number one at Cycle Ranch in San Antonio. Woo! Go move by Ram Power! Yeah. We got the BFGs on it, so we get the sticky tires and uh, with a lot of power from the Mopar, and it, we, it's like a perfect concept. And RJ Anderson will cross the line for second. We made the best out of a, our bad day and got home second with a flat tire. And CJ Green's battles back to take third. From a flat tire to a podium. That's what it takes a team to do that kind of Hey, CJ's a lap down, right? Yeah, CJ's a lap down. I saw CJ in the corner. CJ's a lap down, don't worry about it. We are definitely going to have to be going to Tommy and scoring to get this officially taken care of because right now we have two drivers thinking they finish in that last podium spot. I'm going to go to the podium and call them out on their rule. Yeah, Curry went into pit because of the yellow and got a tire change, so. You guys were both at the tail. Mine was a local yellow. Dude, they caused, they caused it. It was a local, local yellow until he crashed. No, local yello before you guys made another lap. No, that was, no. So that's how it is. And, uh, two people said they come they'd come over and do three laps. Two laps. He was. Oh, I mean, I've got the, the scoring up there. This shows we went by one time. One time before we went full course yellow. And, and that doesn't mean just because you go by him, the lap doesn't complete to you right here. And, that, and that's the whole field coming by Whatever. here before a lap's complete. So tomorrow, I just take people out then. What's happening here? I have no idea. They're giving it to them. Hold it. Go. I saw CJ in the corner. CJ's a lap down. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go to the podium and call them out on their rules. In the weekend's first race, Casey Curry and CJ Greaves both felt they had finished third. For the mod, just take people out there. Well, and no, yeah. We went full course yellow before uh, CJ had gone a lap down, and so therefore it, it put him back on the lead lap. So uh, after we audited the scoring, uh, that's what it shows is that uh, CJ ended up in third place. After further review, USAC upheld their decision, and CJ Greaves retained his third place finish. What did they figure out? Did they, is CJ still third or is Casey third? CJ is third. Luke Johnson had missed the first race at Cycle Ranch after wrecking his truck in practice. On Sunday, Traxxas stepped in and made sure he would get to compete on the second day of the weekend. Well, last night we were uh, in celebrating Steve's dinner under my canopy where my truck was supposed to be and uh, K2 walked over and 
you know, grabbed my dad and Steve by the shoulder and pulled them aside and said, hey, you know, we have this truck we got back from Sisler. He's running a Pro 2 tomorrow. You know, it's available if, if Luke wants to race it, if you guys are up to it. What's that eligible to race the cup race? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's a... Yes. Honestly, that's I mean... That's why we gave you the truck. And that's kind of, I mean, here's the way I interpret it. When you're practicing for a round, that's participating. Exactly. Just because you don't run in the race, yep. you still participate. Yes. Tracks, this is, this is their race, and they kind of made the rules. So I just want to make sure they're okay with my interpretation. Yeah. Well, we agree with you. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's yeah. the way I look at it. First off, I have to be a little careful getting into this truck. I've never, I've never driven it before, and... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been driving a V8 Pro Light all year, but this, you know, it's it's a different different motor package, a different chassis, something I've never driven before. So I get two laps to try it out, and then we're going straight into the race, and now I get to make it happen. Thanks to Mike Jenkins and the whole Traxxas crew for lending me that truck and get me back out there. Otherwise, you know, I would just be sitting watching for the rest of the day. Luke's earlier crash had taught him to exercise caution on the track at Cycle Ranch. Unfortunately, some of the other drivers had to learn that same lesson the hard way. I came out for the first lap and uh, Sean Morris and I'm going in over in big time. Hope he's okay. Caution, caution, caution. Slow it up, slow it up. We got a truck upside down, upside down. Full car shallow, full car shallow. He's not sure if he got clipped. We want to look at it a little bit further, but he came in really hard and it just, I don't know if it caught a rut or something. You see a wreck like that when he slaps down. My first instinct is to look for the window net. The drivers are trained to put the net down if they're okay. So the first thing I do is look for that net and look for him to be moving around in there. My heart pounds real hard for a while till I can get to him and ask him myself that he's okay. That's really what reassures me. We started out in reverse order, so I got in sixth place because I won yesterday. So a lot of traffic to go through and I worked myself through it. Samuel Hubenek goes outside of Randy Eller, battling for second. Here he comes, try to take the spot. We got a tight battle with Casey Kerr. We got car to car contact over some jumps over there. So let's get out on you, Casey. Let's go. Let's make something happen now. Some contact now as they head through the rhythm section. And at that time, he must have cut my tire because my, my left rear tire um, got flat and they saw a big cut in the side. So unfortunately for me, uh, I was the one getting it flat. So I had to pull in. I was all the way in the back when we restarted again. So uh, with that happened, I came into the corner and they just got too much grip on those BFGs and it popped up on the side. And I was like, okay, no big deal, let's turn into it. As I'm going sideways, another berm catch my lower uh, sidebar on the, on the truck and that just made it flip over right away. And it's like, rolled it right over on the, on the roof and my day was over because my gearbox started pouring out fluid. So uh, at that moment, I was like, okay, I didn't know what it was, it was fuel or what it was. So knowing the truck usually get on fire, I had to step out of it and my day was over. CJ Crease battling now with Casey Curry. There you go, drive it in, drive it in. Young driver, 60 years old, going after defending class champion Curry. Momentum, momentum, he's out of play, go. Curry able to hold off Greaves for now. You know, uh, we definitely had speed for the leader. Casey just was more aggressive, and then uh, any time I got next to him, he just pinched me off. No inside up down here. Through that final inside turn, Casey Curry goes the outside. CJ inside. Go, 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 you clear, you clear. Go, 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 dig, 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 dig. And once again, Curry able to hold off CJ Greaves back into turn number one. This is how we're going to play. I can play the same game. You clear, you clear. Go, 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 go. Okay, we got to make it happen right here. You can hear right now, CJ Greaves on the move. Push him out. Push him out. Checkered flag is out. Anderson will be your winner. Go, go, go. You're clear, clear, clear. Coming across the line for second will be Casey Curry. CJ Grease right behind. Good effort, bud. Good job. Good job, Casey. Good job, you guys. Easy. Don't do nothing. I was fucked up a little bit, but no. Oh. CJ. No. Dude, he just fucking ran me. That's racing. That was a clean race. Go so grab the back. Dude, next time I'm not gonna lift when you cut me off going down the whoops. Dude, I was you fucking pushed him right up. Going into the tree. No, not there. Going through the center whoops. Going through the center whoops. I was right next to you and he just moves over. I told him he was clear. He was already clear. He wasn't clear. He was right next to me. But it's all right. It's all right. I just won't lift next time. My front bumper never hit him, and after the race, he came up and drove into my back of my truck, you know, and that, it, that ain't cool, you know. We're not here to do that, and, you know, I gave him many opportunity. I could have taken him out a lot of times, you know. If you want to play that way, you know, it's super easy to come back at him. When it comes to people cutting you off, going down high-speed sections, I mean, that's uncalled for. 
I mean, we raced clean. I don't. I didn't feel a problem. I mean, we raced. It was a race. You know, it was a great battle. But you know, I don't know. I guess tantrums fly. R.J. Anderson won the race and captured second place in the standings. Oh man, I'm so excited. Uh, not only to get this last one, but I, I'm hoping this clinches us for second in points. So. Uh, to come out and uh, get second in points my rookie year in pro light, oh, I'm ecstatic. Not only for me, but for the whole team. We've been working hard all year, just day in, day out, off season, whatever. They put in the effort and never once complained. So I got to give it to all those guys. My parents, I want to give a huge shout out to Kevin Croyer, who's been a huge part of my success through all of racing and uh, he never gets enough credit for me. So huge shout out to him, Walker Evans Racing, Goodyear Tires, South Point, Mastercraft, Oakley. Everyone thinks. The weekend's second race caused even more conflict between Casey Curry and CJ Greaves. Meanwhile, Andrew Cadell stepped to the podium as the 2011 Pro Light Champion of the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil. I am standing up here with our first off road championship, the 2011 Pro Light Champion. Let's make some noise for Andrew Cadell. Congratulations. <laughs> Even though Andrew Cadell had won the championship, there was still one more race to be run. The cup race is game on. It's, it's after the end. Whatever happens, happens. I guess it, we're, only, we're leaving it all on the track. To promote the ProLite class, Traxxas decided to sponsor Torque's first ever ProLite Cup race. First place was $15,000, three times more than a typical race. The last event we see is going to be a cup race with a big uh, winner takes it all, 15,000 American dollars. We'd love to win that Pro Light Cup race, not just for the money, but you got the momentum going into next year. I want that cup as much as anything. Everyone's going in here wide open. Checkers or wreckers? Yeah, it's going to be balls out. No one's going to hold back there for sure. It's going to be quite a carnage, I think. You have nothing to lose. You have all winter to fix your truck. So what are you going to do? There's definitely going to be a lot of carnage, but it's awesome. They're putting it up and putting it out there for us, so it should be fun. And I hope fully hold a $15,000 check in my hand. It'll be great. I'll go and buy a snowmobile then. With the purse and prestige of a cup race on the line, USAC promised to keep a close eye on the growing animosity between Casey Curry and CJ Greaves during the race. All right, we got a confirmation. Kevin is aware of the threat, and they're going to be watching closely. Zero tolerance. Don't worry about that. Let's just do what comes natural. I'll meet you on the podium. We're going to go with this money bot. Fastest truck, best driver. We've got to be a fix for this thing, buddy. Truck looks good, Sam. You know what to do. Top it up, top it up. The inaugural Traxxas Pro Light Cup race. $15,000 to the winner. Green flag is out. Lovell and Curry are on the front row, and Curry immediately jumps out to the lead. He's got to be one of the guys feeling most confident coming into this race. Cadell now in his third. Here comes Brad Little the inside. Lovell trying to take the stop back. And more contact. That's been a theme this week, and a lot of contact between all the guys here in this pro light field. It's been a point of controversy. And right now, you see Casey Curry. He has got the world's biggest chip on his shoulder right now, the way this weekend has been going. After all, he is defending class champion. After this weekend, no longer. That's right. Cadell has it all locked up. Trouble for Hubinette as he goes around. Looks like he'll collect Lovell as well as RJ Anderson. Go, they're wrecking all over the place, man. You go, go, go. Curry's lead will grow a little bit here in the early laps. Huge names off the track trying to work their back on. As you can see, our leader coming through the turn once again on lap number two all by himself. Cadell and Lovell side by side. A little bit of contact as they go through the rhythm section. Same for Anderson and Hubinette as they make a little bit of contact. Great side-by-side -side action further on the pack. Casey Curry in a tour of Nissan, having raced already twice this weekend, running away from the rest of the field so far. Something broke. Yeah, you got a broke left front. Broke left front. Broken the AR, Miller. Done. You're done. Shut it up. Sam Hubinette out of the race. He'll be out of the running for that $15,000 top prize. OK, we've got to get by him because we can't let Casey get out front of us. There's no yellow flag. Remember that. You can hear K2 spotting for Andrew Cadell as he gets a little over, rotates a little bit in the corner, will lose a little bit of momentum, but then keep in mind there will be no competition yellow in this race, is what he's trying to tell his driver. Brad Lovell, once again, has really made a name for himself this year in short course racing, so he's doing very, very well in his Nissan. But again, Cadell coming up in that Traxxas entry, trying to get in the mix of things. He's also got the championship wrapped up for 2011, but he wants that money more than anything in the world. I keep bringing it up, 15 grand, man. Worth pointing out, Scott, that Reeves has gotten around Anderson in the battle for fourth as well. Go, 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 go! 
Cadell goes around. He'll lose two spots. Tough break early on for Cadell. Go, go, you're clear. Go, go. Now he'll have a huge hill to climb if he wants to get back to the front of the field. Matt moves Greaves up into third. Anderson now up into fourth. Man, just like his own man, CJ slowly, methodically working his way to this field, waiting for other guys to make mistakes. He's being aggressive, but staying out of trouble at the same time. And of course, he's still looking for his first win in a pro light truck ever. Best line all the way, buddy. Best line all the way. And it's all, once again, all about that Nissan up front and Casey Curry. Curry has it all figured out right now, everything from the tires to the setup. Like you said earlier, the truck is a little bit beat up, but what's left of it is running completely strong. As we look at that Monster Energy entry, it says number two on the, on the plate, but he's defending class champion. As we now see Brad Lovell in second, C.J. Greaves looks like he's gaining ground on second place right now. Greaves definitely on the move. He's gained about two spots in the last three laps. And he'd love nothing more than to catch up to Lovell now and make that a race for second place. Every single time you see these trucks going to the corners and you see them get up on two wheels, that is nothing more than telling you they got the tires set up and they're actually running right on that ragged edge. If they're not up on two wheels or barely kind of skating around those corners, they're not going hard enough. Another factor playing into that, Scott, is that the soil here in the San Antonio area, especially at this track, it's not quite settled down yet. It's very loamy red sand. And this track in particular isn't packed down as much as the drivers would like it to be, so they're having some trouble with ruts. A lot of drivers call that a virgin track. I mean, a lot of places we've gone to, the first time it's ever been raced on, the dirt doesn't have a chance to settle over a year or two or three. It's freshly packed, it's freshly built, and it just doesn't take anything at all for, like you said, to run up. And a virgin track, as you call it, is also a great equalizer for the field. Usually we see a lot closer competition because there's no quote-unquote book on the track. No driver has it completely figured out before they get there, obviously. Once again, we're going up front to Casey Curry, and I can't help but think that these guys did their homework overnight and have really got this truck perfectly set up. Everything from the shock set up to the tires, tire grooving, tire pressures. This truck has the advantage so much over everybody else right now. Scott, there's a long way to go in this 15 lap race and I'm not sure if anybody can catch up to him right now. As he looks like he's still pulling away and I, get, I, I wonder how much of his driving right now, obviously his truck set up, but how much of it is his attitude. Come on buddy, 10 to go, 10 to go. That's C.J. Green spotter, Big Louie, telling him 10 laps to go here in the chase for the $15,000. Cadell goes up on the bicycle, now way off the pace. Fortunately, no one anywhere close to him to put a move on. As we go back to the second place battle, Brad Lovell run has it. C.J. Graves going after it, and now he's close enough. He can go inside the turn, Lovell goes wide. C.J. pulls up alongside. Absolutely, he's got battle for second now as Greaves putting a lot of pressure on the back bumper of Brad Lovell as they enter the infield section of the course into the hard right-hander. Greaves sets up inside, now he goes up on the bicycle. Right there's an example of these guys are running on the edge and definitely the track is starting to go away. There is no competition yellow. The track is going away. All these things are starting to come into play right now. And that's another example of where a spotter might have to step in and keep their driver calm. Anderson now goes to the inside of Greaves, slides out, and they make some contact. RJ Anderson pulls back away from CJ Greaves. These guys are starting to bang on each other in front of you here. Anderson goes up on two wheels, makes the save. How about that? Just like his dad, C.J. Grease being very quiet, kind of quiet, working his way to the field. Was in third, fell back, made a mistake, now back in the third once again. Very opportunistic move by Greaves to get back around Anderson after the bobble by Anderson. Now about eight car lengths separate level in second and Greaves in third. Uh, at what point in time, Shane, we got to ask ourselves, when are these drivers going to stop trying to be smooth, trying to, you know, jock your position and start being aggressive and going after those last three, four laps. Oh, Cadell goes up on two wheels and he's into the wall, so more trouble for Andrew Cadell. Andrew, you're not wrecking the racetrack. The ruts are extremely big out here. It's just not our day, guys. A driver isn't usually told it's not his day after receiving a championship trophy, but Andrew Cadell's struggles during the Pro-Lite Cup race meant one of the other drivers would also get to leave Cycle Ranch with a trophy in hand. 
The hard luck kid, Casey Curry, running up front, still with major dominance in this race, Shane. Well, right now, the battle for third, though, stealing the spotlight as Anderson trying to come back and take it back from C.J. Green. Come on, buddy, right there. Let's go. Easily the two youngest drivers in this class. In fact, the entire Pro Series, both still in high school, battling for that last spot on the podium. Setting up on the outside to move in. Come in tight. Less than a car length separate third and fourth place. The battle of the young guys, and Lovell is absolutely digging it right now because he's maintaining his second place position with no pressure from behind. I'm almost thinking that Brad Lovell likes what he's seeing and that there's a little mirror action going on. He's, he's trying to gain on our leader, but he's also watching what's going on behind him. In fact, as the battle goes on for third, it looks like they may be even catching Brad. There's gonna come a time though, Scott, where Lovell's gotta quit looking at his mirror and only look forward. Time is running out for these guys, and basically everyone, including Lovell from second on back, has to stand on it now because Curry is still running away. And the thing is, I don't think he has to worry about the mirror anymore because Brad Lovell on that last turn, actually all he had to do is look out the side window and saw C.J. Grease, R.J. Anderson right there, and they definitely are catching on that second place Nissan. Yeah, three truck battle now for second place. And this could be beneficial to Anderson, too, because if Reeves and Lovell get tangled up, that'll move Anderson up two spots very quickly. Meanwhile, Casey Curry's not even in the picture so far up front, as the battle for second is now bumper to bumper. Reeves applying even more pressure to Lovell now as in for the right-hander on the infield of this course. And we talked about this track, how it's starting to run up and start to go away. Watch all three of those drivers battling for that second spot. They're all taking different lines, concentrating on where their truck may be faster. Watch where the guy is in front of them and trying to go around on a different line. Reeves still trying to make a charge on Lovell. Lovell with a little bit of a bobble as he sets up for the corner. And Reeves is able to look inside. Two very different lines. Next to go. Next to go. Come on, bud. You guys are all catching current. This is getting great. It's almost like these guys were relaxed at the halfway point. Now, as they start the game back together on each other, the intensity is now starting to come right back again. Well, Scott, you touched on it way earlier that there's going to come a time when all the drivers really have to step it up a little bit. And I think we're seeing second, third, and fourth place do that right now. There's no doubt about it. The intensity is really starting to rise in the last part of this race. Brad Lovell's got a mirror full, now a window full of CJ Green. Meanwhile, up front, it's all about Casey Curry, and he's loving to see that three car battle going on in second. Momentum, momentum. Come on, Casey, let's go. There you go, there you go, seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, come on, big thing. All kinds of contact, and it looks like Greaves takes over second. No, seeing it, seeing it, seeing it. Don't let him in, don't let him in. Ready? Yeah. Greaves had the advantage on the inside through turn one. All right, let's go with this thing. And now CJ Greaves has got second. The young kid, 16 years old, now running in second. Now nothing but space between him and our race leader, Casey Curry. These two guys have already mixed it up in both points races this weekend. Like, can we say that there was controversy? No doubt about it, but we've got now Casey Curry up front. Now it's a matter, is the kid good enough? Is that enough of that truck left to reel in our leader? Clear by two, let's go, get that guy. CJ Green's definitely on the move, and here's the thing to keep in mind. He's got one of the best drivers in the world as his spotter, his dad, Johnny Green. You got the excitable kid and the, what I guess you call the ice man able to come. There's going to be kind of a happy medium going on right now between the dad, the spotter, and the kid, the driver. Battle for third heating up as Anderson puts a move to the inside of Lovell. They go side by side through turn number one. Still side by side as they go toward the back stretch area of the course. It looks like Lovell able to hang out of the spot as they head down that back stretch with rhythm section. R.J. Anderson trying to find that outside inside move. Here it is. He'll enter the turn to the inside. Try to pull up alongside Level. Level has the preferred line up along that burn. Battle for third place continues. They've been duking it out now for about half a lap. Now they go back to that hard right-hander on the infield. Another little bit of a bobble by Brad Level. Allows Anderson to sneak underneath the bit, but Level doing a great job once again holding off Anderson. Anderson gets a great bite out of the turn. They're side by side, heading that tight left-hand 180. Anderson will force the issue and go down to the inside. Lovell cuts back underneath. They go side by side again as they come to the finish line. That inside outside move has been working, but right now kind of bit uh, RJ Anderson in the butt a little bit, but he pulls back out front. Anderson finally gains control over Lovell, but out front it's still all about Casey Curry and that Monster Energy Nissan. This gun driver has had the perfect setup for this race all afternoon long as he's going in to another tight right hand turn. As he's up against up, up two wheels, 
There's a big puff of smoke. He bounced off the berm. Look at the tire. Come on, buddy. Take, 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 take. Come on, come on. Stay in it. Stay in it. Go on by. He's got a flat. Just chill. Let's go. Flat tire, guys. He's got a flat tire. We see it right rear. We see it. He'll go right by. Move over. He's got a flat. Yeah. He blew it. I don't know where it hit, but I hit something. CJ Greaves takes over the race lead, just over one lap to go. Tough break for Casey Curry, who led from a drop of the green flag. Tough break, as you said, but now the battle still is going on. Now for a second between RJ Anderson and Brad Lovell. CJ Greaves now up front, and nothing is standing between him and his first win in pro life. Four laps, drive your race. Be smooth. Don't get up on the bike. He's got his fingers on that $15,000 check. This is where the experience of his dad spotting for him is going to try and keep him calm down. Lovell still giving chase on Anderson in the battle for second and third. Just be smooth, be smooth, bring it home. Can you imagine if this was to be your first win of your career in pro light that you're going to be going home with 15 grand? Of course, wheel to wheel, whether you find a hip side of it, I don't know. Nothing but frustration as Casey Curry is still stuck in the hot bit trying to get that tire changed and back out front. Last lap, last lap, just be smooth and bring it home. The race almost completely belongs to CJ Greaves. The only Toyota in the field and the youngest driver now running up front. White flag out. It's over, Dad, we can't catch enough. One more lap here at Cycle Ranch is the only thing standing between CJ Greaves and a $15,000 payday in the Traxxas Pro Light Shootout. Now he just has to keep it. Here's one thing I just noticed. Every fender's in place. Now one is hanging, now one is tore off. Every, that truck is absolutely in complete, perfect, I guess, ready to race condition. CJ was a little bit frustrated after the first two races of the weekend. There was a lot of contact in those races, but he's done a much better job in this race managing that contact, and that's why the truck is still in one piece. Less than one lap remaining, one final time for the rhythm section. You got a good side lead, just play it cool, play it cool. Be cool, be cool. You got three quarters of a straightaway lead on him. Got this, buddy. Drive it home. Johnny Greaves has over 200 career wins, but this might be the sweetest one of all for him and the Greaves family. You got it, buddy. You got it. Woo! Man, you look. Yeah. Casey Curry. CJ Greens will take his first win in a pro light truck. Anderson across the line second, and Lovell comes in third. How does that feel? You are officially the kid. We haven't met all but one lap. That was good driving, dude. Way to make those guys look stupid until that last, until that tire went out. Oh, the hell of a drive. Kid had his first career win, and the only one who might have been happier than CJ was his father and crew chief, Johnny Greaves. Dude, it was phenomenal. I couldn't do it with all my team. Everyone made a huge effort. And you know, we had a great weekend. This is a volunteer team beating factory programs, and these guys are all heart keeping this kid on top. And uh, you know, all they ask is give him 100%, and he gave him 110 today. And, Man, that's my boy. <laughs> I was running clean up front. Everything was good. And you know, I think I just got a little close to the outside um, on that third turn. And I, there, was some, there was some square edge building up out there. And I might have just clipped it and I blew out the sidewall. Hats off to CJ. Did a great job. Uh, my Amsoil Nissan has been absolutely fantastic this season. It's really brought us up in standings. BFG has been working with us all year. They got the best tire out here. I just got to get a little bit more control of this thing to get up on top. These guys made it happen. Couldn't do it with all the, without all these guys. Thanks a lot, everyone. Woo! I wanted it too bad. I don't know how many times I threw it away out there. I went on the bike like 10 times. Finally, when I settled down, I was moving forward, but it's too late at that point. CJ was gone. And, uh, congrats to those guys. They've been working hard all season. I think it's his first polite win. <laughs> I got to thank all the guys from Traxxas for putting up this Pro-Lite Cup. I mean, I went to get my first win if it wasn't for them, and they've been helping me out all year. Could do it without Traxxas, Monster, Maxxis, Oakley, <laughs> Method, everyone. Thanks a lot. I'm out of CJ! <laughs> Good job, man. I'm going to put you in the Traxxas Pro Light Cup. Great race, you guys. Thanks. The win for CJ Greaves is sure to be the first of many in the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil. 
But until the new season begins in 2012, only one man will be able to call himself the pro-life champion. And that man is Andrew Cadell. It doesn't make me feel any different. You know, I'm the champion, yes, but I know next year we're gonna have to come out and prove our worth again. I just wanna say thanks to all the fans for coming out to the Torque Season events and supporting our, our series. No. Hello. Hi. I just get so nervous on camera. I think there's a bug over here. I think. <laughs> that was all a joke. You, you didn't get that on camera, did you?